So since I've done some videos on network security technologies like IPS and firewalls, I thought I'd spend a bit of time talking about specific types of threats that you might see on a network, and, and these are the kinds of threats that, let's say, an IPS might be good at detecting. Uh, so one classic example of a uh, network type threat is something called port scanning. And I, I should be clear, a net, it, it, the port scanning itself is not necessarily a threat. It can be used by both attackers and good guys. And so attackers actually use port scanning as a uh, vehicle for reconnaissance. In other words, they're trying to figure out uh, how a network might work. Um, I spell reconnaissance correctly. Um, reconnaissance, and, and they're trying to figure out how a network might look and, and getting more information about a network. On the other hand, um, maybe administrators, people who are actually administering a system, uh, they may actually use the uh, use port scanning maybe to verify policies or to kind of get an understanding of, of what their their security policy and, and postures look like. So maybe verify policies and kind of improve their overall uh, security posture. And the idea behind port scanning in general is to find open ports. And let me kind of talk about what that means. Uh, so find open ports. And, and you might be asking yourself, well, if you don't know, uh, what is a port? Uh, well, a port actually occurs in the context of TCP IP, which is the uh, standard protocol of which all internet transactions happen. And, and it turns out that uh, in TCP IP, uh, there is a notion of what's called an IP address, Okay, an IP address. And this is what's used to reference hosts and services and so on. But in addition to an IP address, there's also something called a port. Okay, and, and maybe by way of physical analogy, imagine you have uh, a street, okay, and, and you might have a street somewhere, and the street address, you can think of that as the IP address. And perhaps at that street, on, on a particular street address, there happens to be a, an apartment building. Okay, and you might have an apartment building at the street address. The apartments in the apartment building, individual apartments themselves, uh, they would be the different ports, okay? So you can think of the different apartments in the apartment building as the different ports. Uh, and the IP address is kind of like the street address associated with that, uh, with that apartment building, okay? And basically, a port scan is really about finding open ports and really about doing it uh, systematically, okay? Uh, so obviously not in a haphazard fashion, but trying to systematically open up uh, doors in the apartment. You might be wondering, okay, why do you care about opening up doors? And, and obviously, in the physical sense, and if, if you find an open door, then you might be able to rob that apartment. So certainly a thief might want to do that. But what about in the, the technical sense? Why do you really care about uh, opening doors? And it turns out that um, if you can find an open port um, corresponding to a service, let's say a particular service running on that system, and that service happens to have a vulnerability, you can now identify that vulnerability and attack it. Okay, so let, let's explain what this means more concretely. Well, it turns out that most uh, applications uh, often do run, especially internet type applications, do run very well defined ports. And so, for example, um, port 21 is the, is the port typically associated with FTP. Uh, port 22 is affiliated with, with something called SSH. Uh, there are other port numbers. Um, 23 is Telnet. Uh, 25 is what's called uh, SMTP, the uh, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol for email. Uh, 53 is associated with DNS. Uh, the list goes on and on. Actually, the, the most one of the more common ones, 80, is for the web, for HTTP traffic. So all your internet browsing happens over port 80. And, and, and again, you can, you can literally keep going with this list. There are actually uh, 65,535 possible ports. And actually, this is a number that a lot of computer security people and even computer science people have committed to memory just because uh, 65,535 happens to be equal to, and, and this is me maybe going into some more detail than you want, but it's 2 to the 16th minus 1. And uh, the reason you know that is it, it turns out that 16 is the number of bits that are used to encode a port number. And if you have 16 possible bits, then you can form 2 to the 16 possible numbers, but 0 is not a lot of support numbers. So that leaves us with 65,535 possibilities. Okay. And the, the idea is that when you're, you're doing a port scan, you're not necessarily going to try every single one of these possibilities, and that, that would be really way too noisy, and that would require a lot of effort on your part. But you might cherry pick uh, interesting possibilities, and obviously you would maybe cherry pick possibilities that are associated with either ports that, that are well known and have well known applications running behind them, or maybe perhaps ports where you uh, might already have an exploit in mind for a particular vulnerability. Like maybe you have, and this is actually happens uh, quite commonly, one example of a port that, that, that's used in attacks is port uh, 
1433. This is actually the port that's associated typically with SQL Server. And SQL Server is basically a database uh, service that you can run in it. it. It's a database service that uh, is used to host a database on a web server or any other type of server for that matter. Uh, and if you find, uh, and it turns out that if there are vulnerabilities, and there was one example a while back of a vulnerability on SQL Server, you could then, if you found that 1433 was open, that would be an indication that SQL Server was running on that particular system. Then you can try to mount an exploit on SQL Server and attack it that way. And, and just the, the fact that you see something on port 1433 is in and of itself uh, pretty good evidence that something uh, is running there and you can, you can try to take advantage of it. I'm going to pause this video right here and I'm going to keep going and talk a bit more about port scanning in the next video as well. Thanks a lot and I hope you join me for that.